all patients with colon cancer need some kind of gene testing. Metastatic patients need a panel, in my opinion. You need to know MSI, you need to know RAS, RAF, you need to know HER2. And so you want to know that right from the beginning because it will affect your overall decision making. How many cards do you have in your hand? How you want to go play drug A versus drug B? Um, you have to know the molecular profiling early on. In patients who's diagnosed with newly diagnosed metastatic colorectal cancer, there are certain molecular profiling that we should order at the beginning to decide how to manage the patients. One of the uh, predictive markers that we've tested is the RAS status. We know that patients who are RAS mutant do not respond to EGFR drug, and patients who are RAS wild type tend, tends to respond to EGFR drug as well, tends to respond to EGFR drugs. Now, there are some questions about whether we need to test a RAS testing in a right-sided tumor. Now, in a first-line setting, based on, based on the um, CLGB8045 study, based on the FIRE3 study, based on the PEAK study, there's, cl there's clearly no benefit of adding EGFR drug in RAS wild type in a right-sided tumor. However, in the second and third line setting, it's quite unclear. If you look at the data in the second line setting, there's data that adding EGFR drug in the right-sided tumor may have no benefit. However, in the third line setting, there was a trial that randomized to cetuximab versus best supportive care. In the third line setting, they went back and looked at the sidedness, right side versus left sidedness. In that study, they found out that the right sided tumor, there was, there was no benefit in terms of PFS in terms of adding EGFR. However, there was a slight improvement in overall survival. Therefore, based on those conclusions, I would say that you sh still should test for, for RAS status in the right-sided tumor uh, and pr possibly use the drug in a, probably in third or fourth line setting if you have no other options left. In colon cancer, BRAF uh, testing should be done at the beginning as well. Now, BRAF has a couple of uh, implications. Number one is that if you're BRAF mutant, you tend to have much poor prognosis and you tend to be resist resistant to EGFR drug. Therefore, if you know that your patient has BRAF mutant at the beginning, you want to be more aggressive with those patients because the median survival is only from 18 to 20 months. So in those cases, you would want to start like regimen called Fulfinox regimen. And second thing is that there are now trials targeting the BRAF mutant tumors. Therefore, if you know the patient's BRAF mutant tumor, you could look out for those trials to enroll those patients on the studies as well. In terms of HER2 amplification, it is known that about 2 to 3 percent of the patients, of patients with advanced colorectal cancers are HER2 amplified. If you look at all RAS wild type, it's about 5 percent. Now, the significance of HER2 amplification is in two folds. Number one is that patients who have HER2 amplification and RAS wild type are also resistant to EGFR drug. Therefore, those patients should not get EGFR drug despite having RAS wild type. Second thing is that now there are drugs targeting those HER2-driven colon cancer. For example, there was a trial combining trastuzumab and lapatinib showing response rate of 30%. Therefore, if you know that patients are too positive, number one, you probably should not use EGFR drug. And second of all, you should probably look for some of the trials that targets her two new drugs or possibly get those drugs off-label for the usage to the patient. Other than the RAS and the BRAF and her 2 new, uh, there are biomarkers for immunotherapy that's well known. The MMR or MSI status must be tested at the beginning because those will predict who will respond to the immunotherapy checkpoint inhibitors such as pembrolizumab or nivolumab. So the incidence of MMR uh, or mismatch repair deficiency or MSA high in colon cancer is about 5%. But yet we test all the patients. We should test all patients with MMR because those patients will be a good candidate for checkpoint inhibitors and may get a good durable response out of it. Other than MMR, there are actually other uh, biomarkers that's out there that we could also test for, such as track fusion. Now track fusion occurs about only 1% of the time. But this is very important because um, there are drugs targeting the track fusion, and the data shows that if you have the track fusion, the response rate could be up to 75% if you use certain drugs for that, uh, certain drugs that targets uh, that track fusion. So therefore, even though it's very rare, uh, if you have those track fusion, then it can potentially be life-changing events for the patient in terms of treatment. And there are other um, fusions such as red mutation and alk fusions. Now, those trials are a little bit preliminary, small studies, but once again, similar to track fusion, if you have those fusions, and, you, and since there are drugs targeting those areas, that you could get a very durable response out of it if you could find a trial or possibly get those drugs off-label.